Shir Singh. During the attack on the Golden Temple, Bhai Sukhdev Singh Babar, was alongside of Sanji, and in my area many of the boys were attached to his Babar Khalsa. Most of them came to my place as a safe hideout. They trusted me because they knew I had passed the test of fire. I had been in detention many times and never uttered one word. They knew I was a man who might get cut into pieces, but would never tell anything. I would like to tell the story of how I got more and more involved in militancy, until I became one of the most feared men in our region. But I first have to describe my city, Batala, since its geography became important in how the struggle shaped up there. There is a Gurdwara in Batala, called Satkartari. On one side of that Gurdwara, Hindus are in the majority, and on the other side Sikhs are in the majority. Basically, Batala is a Hindu-majority city, so Satkartari was the only safe place for us to hold our meetings. The Hindus thought then that if they were to take possession of this Gurdwara, there would be no place for us to gather or to plan things. One day I was sitting in my office at a transport company in Batala, when somebody came running in to tell me, that tensions had erupted around this issue of the Gurdwara. The brother-in-law of my brother had been killed, and my brother was badly wounded, and there was a curfew planned. It was about one mile from my office to the Gurdwara, so I just ran towards it. I saw some Sikhs holding swords in their hands on the way, and I called to one to give me a sword. One young man said, there's no fight with swords, we need to get some guns. With the help of some other guys, I broke the lock of a gun shop, Lahore Gun House, and we got 35 rifles and some ammunition from there. Running, we brought those things to Sat Kartari Gurdwara. We took positions on one side of the Gurdwara, and we were now in a position to defend it. Due to our firm resolve, nobody dared to actually attack the Gurdwara. But after that, I was wanted by the police for breaking into the gun shop and leading that defense. As my brother's brother-in-law was to be cremated, I pretended to be his brother, and I was allowed to accompany his ashes, when they were thrown into running water, as is our custom. I was able to escape the police cordon that way. We Sikhs in Batala felt that we were the captives of the Hindu population. We knew we could be done to death at any moment. We were so insecure in that city, that Sikhs from neighboring villages used to show their solidarity with us, by sending messages saying, don't worry, we are with you. Then, at one point, Sikhs from all the rural areas surrounded Batala city, and sent a warning to the Hindus that if they touched a single Sikh, they would burn the whole city. The Hindus were so frightened that they didn't come out of their homes, and all the factories owned by Hindus were closed down. There was a lot of bitterness. It came to be that whenever Hindus found a Sikh, they attacked him, and whenever Sikhs found a Hindu, they attacked him too. It was an atmosphere of great danger. Now you should know that there are also a good number of Christians in my village. Their main occupation is as buyers of cows and bulls, which they sell to the southern parts of India. One time, three of the trucks of these Christians were stopped by those Sikhs in the cordon, and the cows and bulls were all freed. They didn't want those innocent animals to be killed. The Christians were sent back to their homes. After that episode, the Christians got worried that those Sikhs might take further vengeance on them, so they came to my home, and started explaining how it was just a form of livelihood for them. When they arrived at my place, there happened to be five or six activists of the Babar Khalsa there. I told the Christians that I understood their situation, and that I would help them get their animals back. I sent some of the Sings with them for protection, so that they could ask for their animals back. Eventually they were able to retrieve all those cows and bulls. On the way back from this negotiation, I noticed that a police check post had been set up. After we passed the checkpoint, somebody noticed that I was Sher Singh, a hunted man in that city. The police started following our truck, but we didn't notice anything and we remained in a jolly mood, having gotten the cattle back for those Christians. Suddenly three police jeeps pulled up in front of us, and many police personnel got out, guns in their hands. Hands up, they said. I thought of running away, 
but then I realized that they might fire at me, and kill me. The police started asking the others, Are you Sher Singh? Are you Sher Singh? I announced, I am the person you are looking for. Meanwhile a great crowd had gathered around the jeeps, and people started saying, We will not allow this boy to be arrested. The head of the police party got scared, and ordered his driver to pull out and drive quickly through the crowd, come what may. I was in the jeep in his custody by that time. So sudden was the start of the jeep, and with such speed was it driven, that people were falling onto the sides of the road, being thrown into ditches, and so on. When we passed through the thick of the Hindu-dominated area of the city, people started dancing in jubilation, as they saw that the police had captured me. They continued these celebrations after I was taken into the police station. A Sikh crowd tried to encircle them, to give them a good lesson that the capture of Sher Singh was no cause for jubilation. They dragged three Hindus out of a car and killed them. I said jokingly to the police, that after the wheat ripens and it comes time for harvesting, you will find more dead Hindus in every field. I knew that about a dozen overjubilant Hindus had also been punished during the days preceding this particular episode. I was in custody for 10 days and I was tortured very badly. They wanted to know who had been involved in this killing of 12 to 14 Hindus. I told my interrogators that I knew nothing about that, that my role had been only to get the things we needed for the defense of the Gurudwara. They couldn't get anything more out of me. I then spent about a month in Gurdaspur jail, and then I was sent to the security prison in Sangrur. I was there for more than eight months, and during that time my brother, who was a police officer himself, was arrested and tortured. They were trying to get him to tell about those activists who used to visit me and stay at my place. One thing very deep in my mind as I got out of that prison, was that I had gotten more than my share as punishment, than I had actually put in service to the cause. I thought, if they bother me now, I'll become a living hell for them. Now I'll let them know what a Sikh is really like. I sent messages to all the militants in the region and I said, now this is your home. You can come at any time, day or night, and tell me what you need. I am at your total disposal, even if you need me for an assault action. It was my firm resolve that now I could do anything for the movement. I acquired an expertise in carrying weapons from one location to another. I used to carry AK-47s, rocket launchers, and other sophisticated equipment. I devised many clever ways of transporting them, which I don't want to disclose. The police knew that somebody was doing this service, but they couldn't imagine it would be Sher Singh, who had just come from a lengthy prison sentence, but hadn't told anything. I tried to be a good guy in the eyes of the police by being around them, and letting them see where I was during the daytime. But my nights were spent in the service of the Sikh nation. I told my brothers, the night is yours. There is a bazaar in Batala called Chukri Bazaar, and the Hindus started challenging openly, that even a small sparrow, let alone a Sikh, could not get into this bazaar. In the past, there had been four or five Sikh shopkeepers in Chukri Bazaar, but the Hindus harassed them so much, sometimes burning their shops, that they eventually fled from that place. There were episodes in which passers-by got their turbans torn off and their beards cut. Khalistan may be somewhere else, the Hindus used to taunt, but here in Chukri you dare not enter. My Babar friends started telling me that we should do something about this challenge. One fine morning in April, six friends came to me and said, Sher Singh, we would like to have your services. They said they had been discussing the issue for some time, and that now a service at Chukri Bazaar had to be done. I told them, OK, I am also feeling embarrassed about these continual challenges. Just tell me what to do. They gave me a list of things which they wanted, which included some batteries, some light bulbs, some wire, a welding instrument, and timepieces. I went into the city and got all these things. In the main room of my house, I spread out all the stuff. Two of those six were experts in bomb making, and they prepared four bombs out of the things I had provided. All four were fixed in such a way, 
that there was a difference of seconds between the times of explosion, so that if one bomb goes off, and the Hindus start running in one direction, the next second another would go off, then if they run in another direction, the third would go off, and so on. In this manner the four bombs were set. I asked my comrades, it is a very strict thing to enter that bazaar, so how will you plant these bombs? They said, don't worry about that. They then asked me to get 40 kilograms of rope, 10 to 15 brooms, 4 kilograms of sugar, some tea, and some soap. They also asked me to bring four bicycles, and four big rubber straps, to tie something to the carriers of the cycles. They fixed up one cycle to look like a farmer was taking something to market. On one they set five brooms in one direction, and another five in the other direction, so that it seemed that a small shopkeeper was taking brooms to sell in a local shop. Another had a bag in which they put all that sugar and soap, as if maybe somebody is taking daily necessities to his home. Then I saw that they had brought four young boys, without beards, maybe 12 or 13 years of age, looking just like school children. They gave them the four cycles, and put four good watches on their wrists. They told them to drive into the bazaar and at exactly the time which had been given, to leave the cycles there and come out safely. Then they were told to come to a certain place, and inform us whether they had accomplished what they were told to do. My home is just a short distance from the main city, and at my place, we turned off the threshers at the time for which the explosives had been set, so that we could hear what was happening. I didn't hear any sound at the desired time. So I started walking along the road leading to the city. Then I saw that people were running all over the place, rushing around, some falling off their cycles in their haste. What happened? I asked. They said that bombs had exploded. All four of the devices worked. How many died in those blasts, we may never know. But it was a very thickly populated Hindu area. We had certainly replied to their challenge in a very effective manner. Those four kids which we used in that process, they all got away and then they went to their relatives in other places. To be on the safe side, they didn't go home. There was strict police vigilance after the bomb blasts, and there were CRPF checkposts all around. One of the boys who was going to his sister's village was stopped and frisked, and the CRPF people found that he was terrified. So under intense interrogation, he said that the boss for whom they worked was Mistana. Police went in good strength and cordoned off the area, and arrested him after an intense search. He had already been a wanted man. Mistana was interrogated so brutally that he was near death. I got the message that I should be vigilant too, as one of the boys had been arrested. It turned out that he had told that whatever explosives were used in the bombs, were made in Sher Singh's house. It was about 8.30 in the evening, when some 300 police and paramilitary forces surrounded our house. There were some boys near there fixing the electricity transformer, and the police arrested all of them, thinking that I might be among them. But fortunately I happened to be on the other side of the village. I could see that my house had been cordoned off, and I sneaked back by another path to see what was going on. In the darkness, I saw four or five boys coming towards me. I thought it must be some servants, so I called out their names. But really it was the CRPF officers. When I saw that, I said to a friend who was with me, Oh God, they are police. They asked me in chaste Hindi to accompany them to the head officer. I told them that I was the son of Chana Singh, who was a village official whose job was to collect revenues. I said I was only at that house to return some tools. I started retreating backwards, and the CRPF officers didn't really show much interest. If they had known that I was Sher Singh, they would have killed me with a burst of ammunition. But as I retreated, the CRPF grabbed my friend, Dilbar Singh Sabi, by his collar. He called to me, I've been caught. I ordered the officers sternly, leave him. And the police got scared and left, and my friend ran and ran. I later learned from my mother and sister that Mistana, who had been arrested on the word of the kid, had been brought back to the village, 
and that he was lying just like a heap of wood. He was half unconscious all the time, and his bones were all broken. That gang of boys who had been fixing the transformer, they were ordered to search through all the piles of chaff around there, to find any guns that might be hidden there. You see how everybody was dragged in, involved or not. The police told my mother that I should court arrest, otherwise my whole family would be killed. They said this in very strong terms. So my mom came to where I was, and she asked me to give myself up for arrest, as the police assured her that nothing would happen to me if I did that. I asked her, Mom, how is Mastana? She replied that he was just like a log of wood, that he might die at any moment. I said, Look, Mom, if they arrest me, I will be in the same condition after 10 minutes. If they arrest the family, don't worry. I will get you all released. But don't ask me to go with them this time. My mother went back and told the police, she had not been able to find me. They took my mother, my wife, and my sister into custody. The next morning, we all saw the headline news that the dreaded terrorists, Sukhdev Singh and Mastana Singh, got killed in an encounter with the police. The young boys who had put those cycles in the bazaar were arrested. I went into hiding then, in fields and that sort of thing. The condition of the animals was really pitiful. They were all left free with nobody to take care of them. Villagers were warned not to provide them with water or anything. Finally they died. Fields were uncared for too. It was announced on the village loudspeaker, that if anybody did anything about the animals or the fields, they would be punished. After six or seven days my mom was released, and she was warned not to stay in her home. But she had no place else to go, so she went home. My brother, who was a junior commissioned officer, was able to go and take care of her. He was asked where I was, but he said, I don't know. I was performing various useful services for the nation while I was in hiding. Then my friends got together and told me, OK, you have done your part, now go and get some rest. Go out of the country, and you can come back at some later point. I had been in hiding for a year and four months before I got out of India. I swear by Guru, that during the time I was in the movement, I didn't do anything immoral. Whatever me and my friends did, was perfect to the moral standards of our Sikh religion.